great Bobby Belt? Bobby Belt is an idiot. Don't make me take off my belt. Don't make me no, take no, off my belt. We're not. Over to you, Bobby. Six weeks. There is six weeks that Mike McCarthy has to survive. If he gets through that, he'll be here for the entire season. But we're watching six weeks in particular for Mike McCarthy as the Cowboys now sit at one and one. And Jerry Jones yesterday telling us, ah, look, contract status for Mike McCarthy. That has nothing to do with uh, magnifying or making things worse from New Orleans. We're giving a bunch of praise after Cleveland. They, they, that's not got anything to do with it. All right. And maybe, maybe some of these early season struggles, I mean, postseason success. Well, if you struggle too much, you may not even get a chance to go to the postseason uh, success and, and have that question. Now, these shows, these shows with the Cowboys coverage, turn on your mic. They don't even have any shame. <laughs> Thought it was on. Thanks, Peyton. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like 80% coverage. Trivia question Who has the most rushing yards against the Cowboys? Jeff Saturday breaking it down. The Jerry Jones uh, segments from the replay of our interview yesterday yeah. over and over and over and over. It's getting more. They it's, can't, they can't let it go. They, they are the big brand for a reason. Now, uh, Jerry Jones' chief rival, real quick before we get into the schedule, Arthur Blank, who uh, he's butted heads with ever since the Goodell contract extension. Uh, Arthur Blank received a very large honor. This is amazing. Arthur Blank is inducting himself into the Falcons Ring of Honor this weekend, Chop. <laughs> okay. How, are you sure he's yeah, inducting Yeah, I just read him? it. That's, that, what it. that's what it says. It says that he's putting himself in. Is Jerry even in? in no. It? No, he's not. <laughs> so Arthur's the selector of the Ring of Honor. Yeah. And so Arthur what Blank a is... loser <laughs> move. He's going into the Ring of Honor. And he's, he's somebody who... The Falcons have gotten a lot of praise for their cheap concessions. Yes. Now, they're going to go even cheaper in honor of Arthur Blank. So he's giving everyone who attends the Chiefs-Falcons game free hot dogs. You get two per attendee. So they're going to give out two free hot dogs to everybody who comes to the stadium. That's oh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, two free bags of chips. An unlimited soda in a free souvenir cup. Okay. What would it, what do you th- what would you expect to pay for two hot dogs, two chips, and a souvenir soda? Thirty bucks uh, at a stadium usually. Uh, oh no no no. Thirty four. Uh, forty two. Uh, forty two dollars easily. Uh, uh, yeah. Forty two bucks. Yeah. I mean, but his, sl- his say s- slogan is "more saving, more doing." Is it? I don't know what that the means. Home Depot one, right? Oh, is he a Home Depot guy? He was the owner. He was the founder. I had of no him, idea. Not. You didn't know that? No, he looks like he. Uh, no, doers like, get more done. No, he looks like the butler for a haunted mansion or something. He does have that butler for. Yes, he does look like he was in House on Haunted Hill. Remember how I told you yesterday? I like detected some shots from Belichick. It was towards yeah. the Falcons. Barstool went and did an audio recap. Great. It was vicious. It was vicious. It was so petty. I loved it from Bill. You know, I love petty. And he took three or four shots, and he was talking about Arthur Blank, uh, Arthur down there on the sideline rooting when they were up 28-3. I remember that about the Super Bowl. Yeah. <laughs> took that shot, said, oh, that's one of the three players that they tampered with. Yeah. The, um, the discipline, players, yeah. lack of discipline, they, they didn't tackle week one either. They didn't yep. tackle week two. They didn't tackle week one. Shots. But Arthur Blank's grade, what 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 great does he deserve to go in based off wins losses and success there? Uh, well, I mean, um, my quick answer is no, no. Oh, since Rich McKay got there in 04. was he was he owner of the Dirty Bird team? I don't think so. Let With me look Jamal? that up. I don't know. Since he, so since Rich McKay got there at least in 04, they're five games over five hundred. Yeah, and. Should have a Super Bowl win, but should they don't. February 2002, so no, he was not there for the Dirty Bird Yeah, team. man, what are you doing, man? Even Jerry Jones hasn't put himself in the Cowboys' ring of honor yet. His pettiness was Jimmy, but Jerry hasn't even put himself in. You're putting yourself in? Clown. Clown move. All right, what's worse, that or just building himself a statue out front? Does he have a statue? No, he does. I'm oh. saying, like, what if he did that he instead? He would, I'm sure. Uh, they, when, when they, let's say if they built the new bo- stadium. Both. Right? It's just equally. Both. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I mean, he would not be the first person to, uh, like, dictate that you build a, a, a shrine to him throughout the course of history if you go back uh, through time. But it, I think he is the first to put himself in a ring of honor. Uh, all right, so and this... he still goes down on the field. Yes. No one. I can't remember the last time anyone's ever talked about that. Yeah, he's down there all the time. Except um, for Belichick. So Dallas is now 1-1, one and, one, and I think the stretch that Mike McCarthy's really got to be worried about in terms of his job security is going to be weeks 8 through 13. So those are the first six games coming out of the bye week. Um, so when they come out of the bye week, 
I think the worst case scenario, they said it one and one right now. Worst case scenario, we would agree, I assume, is two and four. Because here's their next games. Baltimore on the road against the Giants. On the road against the Steelers. At home against the Lions. You're beating the Giants, yeah. I assume. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's possible you could lose to the Ravens, Steelers, and Lions. I don't know that it's likely. Yeah, it's possible. But, you know, I, I think what's more likely is... What did ESPN say about that possibility? Are there analytics? ESPN's analytics says the Cowboys will be... Well, I shouldn't say will be. They have a... They will be the underdog in four of the next five games. Not in terms of necessarily the point spread, but, like, their chances of winning the game. You know how they do, like, the F, the, the chance yeah. of winning... So they have they give the give they give the Cowboys a forty seven percent chance against Baltimore, a sixty percent chance against the Giants, so they should win that one, a forty nine percent chance at Pittsburgh. So toss up, but still, if they were to play that season a hundred times, they would lose more than they would win, a forty four percent chance against Detroit, and then a thirty six percent chance at San Francisco. So again, if you played the Cowboys season out a hundred times in a simulation. They would be two and five more often than anything else. I think they right now my best guess is they hit the bye week and they're three and three. That's what I would guess is gonna happen. Worst case scenario would be two and four, but I would imagine they're probably gonna lose right now to Baltimore and Detroit, is what I would guess. And they they beat Pittsburgh and the Giants. Okay. Or or maybe some other combination of it. So we'll call it three and three. If they are three and three heading into the bye week, how much heat do you think we're talking about heading into that San Francisco game on McCarthy's job itself? Do you think we're like, nah, this hasn't been a disaster enough to to potentially jeopardize? Not has been has not been a disaster enough. Okay, so now let's pick it up. You still think three and three would be questionable at that point? No, 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 no. I, I think that he would not. They would not have done been enough because they're now. Look, if they go and they play Detroit and they get beat forty four to nineteen at home, like they did against the Saints, and Detroit rolls up on them, and it's like, okay, there's clearly here that you're not on the level of some NFC teams. Maybe but, we could talk. But about But three different. and three has meant that you you beat some Com- combo of Baltimore, Pittsburgh, and Detroit, which we would view as pretty nice wins. That would be, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, mm-hmm. so even if you're three and three, you still beat the Ravens, the Lions, or the Steelers. Yep. And so heading into this game, you'd be three and three. I think that's kind of where everybody's at this point. You'd be three and three heading into a game against the 49ers on the road. That is a nationally televised Sunday night football game. If you're sitting at the bye week and kind of stewing on, I really didn't want us to be 500 heading into the bye, and you were to get just walloped again by the 49ers on national TV, I don't think that's enough to and McCarthy in the season, that's enough to, that is the point I think where you start going, there's, he might get in trouble here. But like, if he doesn't clear the stretch, because after the San Francisco game, here's what you have. On the road the next week against the Falcons, which we don't know who the Falcons are yet, I guess, um, and what Kirk Cousins will be at that point. It is a noon start. Might be a little difficult for Micah. (laughs) Um, One o'clock there, though. Yes, that's true. Uh, So the one o'clock start in Atlanta. The next week, you're at home against Philadelphia and then at home against the Texans on Monday Night Football. So San Francisco, Atlanta, Philly, Houston, let's say they're 3-3 three and three when they get out of the bye week. Worst case scenario, probably 4-6 and six at that point, if you're talking worst case scenario, because they probably steal one of those at least, even, even if they're struggling. I'm not worried about the Falcons yet. So 4-6, and six, is that enough that you think, all right, now there's discussions that Mike is in trouble. Are we talking about discussions of in trouble within the in se- season? No, mm. no, no. I, I really don't think no. In, in season, it, he's not going to make a change at four and six because four and six. It also depends on where the rest of the division is. You know, if the if the division still is in striking distance, I don't think he's going to make a change at four and six. It's going to have to be a the team quit. That so the Green Bay. I don't think Wade gets fired if they lose that Green Bay game by four. You think how they lose matters? Yeah, because what were they one and five at that point? I think they were one and five, something uh, like, one and seven or something. Yeah, it whatever. was it, whatever it was. Um, yeah, it was one and seven. But they could have been one and seven, but they didn't. If they didn't lose like by thirty or twenty eight, whatever it was, I don't think Wade gets fired then. I do think if you're four and six, and then you roll into it's a road game against Washington, short week. For Thanksgiving into the Giants. I think if you're four and six and you lose one of those two games against Washington or the Giants, now you're done. I could see them saying during the 10 day layoff after Thanksgiving, okay. we're resetting, we're hitting the reset button. But I think ultimately, if he gets out of the Giants stretch and they're not a couple games below 500, 
he's probably here through the rest of the year. They then close against Cincinnati, Carolina, Tampa, Philly, Washington. But the hardest stretch of the season is going to be this run all the way up through November. The biggest, I think the biggest threat to McCarthy's job is going to be, you talked about Ravens, Steelers, Lions. If you win one of those, you feel pretty good about picking up a victory against one of those. If you lose all three of those, and then you do get beat down by San Francisco again on national TV, and you're two and five, I think the next day he's out. And so I think he's got to pick up the biggest, most critical stretch for him starts this Sunday through the end of October, up to Halloween. If he can't pick up a victory against one of the Ravens, Steelers, Lions, or 49ers, I think it happens then. I, I think we, we need to learn our lesson uh, starting when Jason Garrett's final year here. Whatever you think Jerry's going to do, I think we sound we even start sounding foolish talking about normal NFL sports yeah. timelines. We have to push it back even farther. Right, because what was Jason, uh, when are 10 we gonna, days after the season ended? When are we going to learn our lesson? You know yeah. what I mean? If, if, if they lose, if they don't make the playoffs, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. They, if they don't make the playoffs, I think Mike, the announcements made on that Black Monday, right? Because if they don't, but I even then, I think you're right. We can't use any timeline because this team doesn't operate on a timeline; they yep. operate on their own. And, Which, and 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 what would you apply that timeline for in season? Uh, in season, and who I, are you going to immediately replace him with? Yeah, see with Zim? um with with Al Jason. Harris. Well, with with Wade Bones. <laughs> With Wade, there was a clear cut. When they made the announcement that Wade was going to get terminated, nobody had a question as to who the next guy was. Wade, Wade was fired after week nine. And so losing to San Francisco would be week eight. It would be around yeah. the same time. But but we didn't, there was a guy clearly yeah. in waiting. We didn't know. It wasn't like, oh man, if they let go of Wade, yeah. who's going to, no, no, we all knew. Because Jason had his big contract then, right? Yeah, because he, get- he made a ton of money. And Below the Belt is brought to you by A Number One Air.